Hi, my name is David Epp, and I'm graduating this year with a BA with majors in history and BTS. So what am I most grateful about at CMU? It's pretty easy, actually, uh, just getting in. <laughs> Seriously, I, I, I arrived at CMU prior to registration. Campus was quiet, as there were only a handful of student leaders present in the residences. On the first night, I ventured out to visit an old friend in a different building. And when I left his room to go to sleep, I was met with the startling discovery that all the dorm buildings were locked and could only be accessed with the correct code. Now, for a kid from Roster in Saskatchewan, this is a bit of a surprise. I don't even think I owned a house key. <laughs> so there I was, a nervous first year with no phone, a few friends, a new city, and I was locked out. <laughs> so I decided that the only sensible thing was to walk around campus and wait for students returning from the bar, Bible study, <laughs> Or, or something who could let me in. <laughs> As I wandered directionless around campus, I came upon a prominent cenotaph outside the Mennonite Historical Center. Only a history student would go walk in there, right? On it, I found plaques commemorating the contributions two men, H. H. Ewart and David Taves, made to Mennonite education in Canada by helping found Mennonite Collegiate Institute in Gretna and Rostern Junior College in Rostern. My studies in history have repeatedly returned me to these education pioneers and their work, particularly the final paper I wrote for my degree. To finish my story, I had become quite cold after spending more than an hour outside, <laughs> so I finally welled up the courage to throw stones at my RA's window. <laughs> it took me a few tries. I hadn't played football in a few years, but I did wake him up, and thankfully he was gracious enough to let me in. For my paper, I examined the origins of MCI and RJC at the turn of the 20th century. Mennonites began migrating to the Canadian prairies in the 1870s and settled in relatively isolated communities. This was done intentionally, as Mennonites sought to protect their religion, language, and identity through separation from Canadian society. Gradually, tensions arose between Mennonites and the provincial governments with a movement towards public schools and their nationalistic and assimilationist goals. Mennonites felt deeply threatened. How could Mennonites comply with governmental education mandates while ensuring that their children acquire the knowledge of the church and community? H. H. Ewart and David Taves provided a solution by advancing a new vision for Mennonite education. At MCI and RJC, Ewart and Taves developed bilingual curriculums. They maintained the traditional emphasis on religion and German, but also insisted that English be taught and used as an instructional language. For the first time in the Canadian prairies, Mennonite students were being equipped with the necessary tools to critically engage with the surrounding society. Students graduated literally and metaphorically with the ability to speak two languages, German and English, or the languages of the church and of the world. My studies in history have instilled in me the belief that the past is with us and that CMU falls within this tradition of Mennonite education. After all, the presence of Ewart and Taves on our grounds is an indication of where our educational roots lie. CMU is, essentially, a school devoted to teaching its students languages. On the one hand, every student takes time to explore and learn about important questions of faith. I have uncovered the history of the church. I have dialogued with theological interpreters in the past and present. And I have met regularly with classmates, staff, and faculty to worship together. I have learned to speak the language of the church. On the other hand, students also work hard within other disciplines. As a history student, I have sought to understand movements and influences that have shaped the world we live in. I have analyzed the formation of Western culture and argued the definition of what constitutes a historical fact. I have learned to write essays, and I have learned to read Aristotle and Thucydides. I have learned the language of my discipline, or the language of the world. Now, with the completion of my degree, I and my fellow classmates are bilingual. We have developed a mature and sophisticated fluency in the languages of the church and of the world. 
or at least part of it. As I leave CMU, I'll be taking my new bilingualism internationally. In the fall, I will leave for Guatemala, where I'll spend the next 11 months living and working in a small indigenous village on several educational access initiatives.